Hey. Hello guys and welcome to the latest episode of Mr. Shady's Snapshot Science. Now in today's video we're going to look at coordination and response in plants. Now, hopefully by the end of this video you're able to describe plant responses to light and gravity. We then want to go on to explain these responses in terms of hormones. And finally, we want to evaluate the use of plant hormones as weed killers. So don't get hormonal, let's get right into it. Now guys, plants are able to respond to their environment. They're able to respond to stimuli just like animals. However, this response to stimuli is often slower than an uh, animal. Okay? Now, plants will respond to a stimulus okay, by either changing their rate or direction of growth. Okay, now growth towards a stimuli is known as a positive response. Growth away from a stimulus, okay, is known as a negative response. All right, now these responses, these positive and negative responses, okay, are known as tropisms. All right, so what is a tropism? A tropism is a growth response by a plant, okay, in which the direction of the growth is affected by the direction of the stimulus. Okay, now these stimulus, two important stimulus, or stimuli, sorry, that you must know about in plants are light and gravity. So let's look at how light and gravity can affect uh, the rate or direction of growth. So how light and gravity can cause tropisms in plants. All right, now, first of all, shoots will normally grow towards the light. The shoots are shooting out of the plant, okay, they're essentially carrying the leaves, okay. Roots don't usually respond to light, but sometimes, okay, they will grow away from light, okay? Now, let's look at gravity on the other hand, okay? Shoots tend to grow away from the pull of gravity, okay? So they will grow up. However, roots normally grow towards the pull of gravity, okay? And these are examples of positive and negative tropisms. Now, let's look at one. Shoots must grow upwards, okay, um, against the pull of gravity, away from the pull of gravity, so that the leaves can be out and catch as much light as possible. Remember we looked at photosynthesis, okay, and light is needed for photosynthesis to occur, okay. Now, roots must grow downwards, so roots will grow down towards the uh, pull of gravity, and this is so that they can get down into the soil and absorb as much water and minerals as possible okay now if we look at shoots to start with the shoot the sensitive region of the shoot is the tip of the shoot okay and this is known as the receptor the receptor is in the tip of the shoot the part of the shoot which is just resp uh, just below the uh, tip okay is the part that re responds to a stimulus okay and this is therefore known as the effector because this is what brings about the effect Okay, so let's start to piece it all together now, all right? Now, today we're going to be looking at a hormone. This hormone is known as auxin, all right? Auxin is made, being made all the time by our roots and our shoots, okay? And auxin can actually travel to different parts of the plant, okay, um, of the root or shoot, anyway, all right? Now, let's look at a tropism, okay? Let's look at phototropism. Phototropism is a change in direction, okay, or rate of growth by a plant due to light, photo light. So, when light shines on the plant from all around, the plant is getting light from all directions. The, this means that the hormone, auxin, okay, is evenly distributed um, in this shoot, okay? So, the cells will all grow at about the same rate. And this means that the plant shoot will grow normally. And this plant shoot will essentially go straight up because it's receiving light from all directions now if light shines onto a plant from one direction okay this will cause the auxin to concentrate on the shaded side this is actually because the aux uh, auxin uh, does something to sorry the light does something to the auxins okay so it damages it so the auxin will concentrate on the shaded side all right therefore in shoots, okay, the shoots will end up bending towards light. And let me explain why. In shoots, auxin causes 
the cells to elongate or essentially lengthen. Okay, so this causes the cells to grow more. All right, so if the aux, if the light shines onto the um, shoot and the auxin moves to the shaded side, it causes all of the cells on this side to elongate or grow more. And because these cells are elongating at a faster rate, they're growing at a faster rate, it causes the plant to bend in this direction and therefore, okay, the plant will essentially bend towards light, okay? Now, again, remember we just said in a shoot, auxin causes the cells to elongate. So imagine a plant is placed on its side, okay? The auxin, and you place this plant in a dark room so that we know that light is not a factor here. The auxin will concentrate on the lower side, okay, of the shoot. And again, the auxin will cause these cells to elongate. They will grow at a faster rate compared to these cells. And therefore, this will cause the shoot to bend upwards. All right? Now, um, we can compare this, all right? But let's look at it. This is the plant, okay, you can see the shoot is bending upwards. Remember, these shoots will give the leaves as much light as possible, okay? And this, first of all, so when we looked at the effect of light, that was phototropism. But when you're looking at the effect of gravity, that is known as geotropism. Okay? So phototropism and geotropism. So we've looked at shoots to start with. Now, auxin has the opposite effect in roots than it does to shoots. In a root, auxin actually causes the cells to not grow as much. It causes the cells to, not, uh, to grow less. And therefore, cell elongation will be more on the side uh, that does where the auxin is not concentrated. So, if you have a root, okay, auxin will be build up on the lower side. Okay, and this is geotropism now. Okay, auxin will build up on the lower side. And therefore, this will inhibit the growth of these cells here. Okay, and what you will have is you will have a faster growth or you'll have more cell elongation on the side where auxin is not concentrated. And that will cause these cells to cause the root to bend downwards. Okay, don't forget, we want the roots to go down to get to the water and minerals, etc. Okay, so this is geotropism, a plant's response to gravity. Remember we said a plant's response to light is phototropism. All right, now it's really important that you remember the difference. In a shoot, uh, auxin causes the shoot to grow more. It promotes elongation on those uh, the cells that it's in contact with. Okay. However, in a root, auxins actually cause the cells that it's in contact with to grow less. Okay. Like in this example, the auxin here caused these cells to grow less, and therefore these cells elongated more, and the plant uh, bent downwards. Okay, towards the direction of gravity. And here's a nice little example for you. Okay, where you can see the short shoots growing upwards, okay, and the roots growing downwards. All right? Now, guys, remember we said you can have positive and negative tropisms. So here's a summary of positive and negative uh, photo and geotropisms, okay? So pause the video and get this table down. Now, guys, let's look at something known as etilo etiolation, okay? Now, Imagine you have a plant, okay, growing in a dark room. This plant, the shoot of this plant, is gonna grow really quickly. And the reason why it grows really quickly is because this shoot is essentially looking for light. It wants to find the light source for the leaves, okay, to catch as, uh, as much light as possible, all right? But this plant is growing in darkness, so it doesn't find the light, okay? So the shoot will grow really quickly, all right? But the chloroplasts will not develop properly, okay? They, they won't de develop right, all right? And what will happen is these plants will grow very, very tall, all right? But this, the plants, are, the leaves aren't getting the right amount of light. So they will have smaller leaves, they will have less leaves, and the leaves will actually be uh, more spread out, okay? So a plants that are in this state, okay, will be, are known as etiolated, all right? The, a key feature of these plants is that they appear yellow, okay? And this is because uh, due to the chloroplast not developing properly and a lack of pigment in these plants. Let's look at the use of the hormone auxin that we've been looking at as a weed killer. 
Now, a weed essentially is a plant that you don't want growing in a certain area. So imagine you've got this beautiful grass, you've got this beautiful lawn at home, okay? But you've got, uh, I don't know, some dandelions growing in that area, okay? These dandelions are the weeds. Now, what we can do is we can use weed killers. These weed killers are selective weed killers. So you don't have to worry about spraying a dandelion with a weed killer, okay? And a weed killer killing the rest of the, um, your grass or your lawn. So what will happen is, when the weed is sprayed, okay, on the dandelion, okay, the auxin will essentially affect the weed and not the grass, okay, because it's selective. Now, what will happen is the weed will respond by growing too fast and will essentially die, okay? And that's how we use weed killers. So guys, hopefully by the end of this video, you're able to describe uh, plant responses to light and gravity. Hopefully you're also able to explain these responses in terms of hormones. And finally, hopefully you're able to evaluate the use of plant hormones as weed killers. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and revise. Mr. Ashodi, signing out. Now this next part of this video is just to, for me to test my class. Okay, I'm going to see how many of them actually see me talking at the end, because I know they skip the end. Okay, so if you're in my class and you see, um, you see this part at the end, let me know. Signing out. Hey.